Hello, this is Michael Pucciarelli, creator of Still Life and Landscape YouTube channel. In today's webinar, we'll be talking about how I use Adobe Photoshop and a camera raw with, you know, photographing a subject on the white flex table. And as you may or may not know, the white flex table is different than the black, obviously the color, but, you know, in terms of cloning and other tools, you'll be, it's different. And today, I'm going to demonstrate that. And today, we're going to start with Adobe Camera Raw. We're going to put the files in default mode. I'm going to do Control or Command R. I'm going to reset the default. You know, the three of this and just say reset the default. Control or Command R, reset the default, the three ellipse and accept the default. Control Command R, your ellipse, reset the default. And a lot of other things you can do with other photography, like light painting, you can load settings for brushes, you could save settings. We just want to use reset the default. I'm going to go back over to the first file. I'm going to do Control or Command R. First, I want to start with the color. Make sure you click this. You see the pencil, not the magnifying glass. I'm either going to click a white or a gray. And I'm going to go back up to the light. I'm going to put contrast 12. I'm going to zero out the highlights. Then the light is the color, and the effects. I'm going to do three. I'm going to do three. Then you have vignetting, and this is great for putting in vignetting. Obviously, that's too much. You can put a slight, but vignetting is great for making the colors even on the edges. <clears throat> Some photographers, digital artists, to put an S curve here, I'd rather just use a levels adjustments in Photoshop and just, you know, adjust the mid-tone slider. Color mixer. I know that saturation, luminance. I know we could zero out everything to make a black and white. I do everything in Adobe Photoshop with the actions. Color grading. We could affect the mid-tones, shadows, highlights. You can do everything. You work them separately. For my photography, I like to leave this alone, but there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with the shadows, highlights, you know, mid-tone shadows. In the past, I used to put the sharpening at like 120 for various portraits, maybe 140 for products. But for the research, I just want to leave this alone. And then I want to make sure I have both of these checked, remove chromatic operation and use profile corrections. Use profile corrections. It'll tell you the lens that you're using in the camera. And it works with the profile. Remove chromatic operation is you removing uh, colors of edges. I know you can do a lot with the lens blur, but I'd rather just use the Gaussian blur on a smart object or the background layer in Adobe Photoshop. <clears throat> Geometry. I just want to click the A and it'll straighten that for me. 
Or if I have to do verticals, I could do it here, but I'd rather use Adobe Photoshop with rulers. Calibration, I want to leave alone. I know you could do shadows and other cool stuff. And I'm going to click Done. Move on to the next photograph. We do Control or Command R. We have some vignetting problems. I'm going to do Cancel. I'm going to do it again. Control Command R. I'm going to just do. But I think the highlights are too powerful. I'm going to just tone them down. At first start. At first start with the color bounce. And then work my way up here. Texture. I want to do three. Clarity. I want to do three. Vignetting. Some, you know, some people like to put vignetting in photographs. That's fine. Some people don't, but vignetting can straighten the problem out. Curve, I'll just rather, like I said, rather just use Adobe Photoshop. Black and white, I just use everything in Photoshop. We talked about how I don't use the color grading. Detail, I do all the sharpening at the end in a background layer in Adobe Photoshop. Optics, I need to remove chromatic aberration and use profile corrections. In this case, I'm using the Canon with the 24 lens EF Canon. And then, you know, I'm using it with the converter. It's an EF lens. I also want to remove the camera chromatic aberration or even color product of the edges. And I just use a Gaussian blur and Adobe Photoshop. And I just want to click on the A, and I don't touch the calibration. Move on to the next photograph. I'm going to do Control or Command R. First thing I want to do, I like to start with a color correction. When you click this, make sure you see the pencil, not the magnifying glass. I'll try to find like a neutral glare or a white. And notice that I, it's at 229 up at top, cross at RGB. I'm going to tone, I'm going to increase the contrast. I'm going to tone down the highlights. I'm not going to worry about the shadows in this photograph. Vignetting. I don't think we have a, maybe a slight problem up here. So I'm going to just, you know, there, I correct it. Do the curve in Adobe Photoshop. And the color mixer, I just use like a hue saturation layer. And then I just come down to detail. I do all the sharpening at the end in the background of Adobe Photoshop. I feel that's better than sharpening Adobe Camera Raw. But I've heard great things about the noise, but I prefer Photoshop to do the sharpening. Optics, I want to make sure that remove chromatic aberration. And use profile corrections is checked. In this case, I'm using a 24 lens convert with the converted to the R6. And the, I'd rather use, you know, lens blur is great, but I feel like I have more control with the Gaussian blur on a smart object or a background layer. 
And then when you click A. In the calibration, I don't want to touch. And now I want to go into Adobe Photoshop. So there'll be a new screen share. A new screen share. So I'm going to make my screen a little smaller so I can work a little better. So I'm going to run my actions. Again, I made a copy of the layer and I just did, you know, tone, auto contrast and color and that's one action. And then I'm gonna run another action. Where when I run this action, this is an action calling multiple actions. So it's gonna call this first part of the action I'm going to do control I to invert it. And then it comes over here, runs this level adjustment. And the last part of this action runs my signature. So since we're using the white flex table, I think it'd be better, make more sense if you just delete, just keep the you know black signature. Now the brush that I'm going to use, it's a soft brush, opacity 10, flow 100, smoothing 10. Make my brush bigger. Now this whole thing is a subject. The beautiful glass ornaments were at the reflections. It's a good feature to reason to use the plex table because you bring out the subject, but also the reflections. Now, maybe I could use another brush if I want to. So I ran the action to, you know, list the brush and the settings. And I'm always using a soft brush. This is why I'd rather use the mid-tone slider for the contrast rather than Adobe Camera Raw. A lot more powerful and effective. And then I'm gonna click in again. Another way to make a photograph really white, just to use the white dropper to make one click on a white. I'm gonna do Control Z, make it dark. And the control of Z. A lot of times I just, you know, just use the mid-tone slider. 
I'm going to save this as demo one. And my actions, my live painting, I'm going to duplicate the layer mask twice. So this, I'm going to turn into a smart object. And and one difference between cloning in the white and black clicks table is that the black clicks table dust will appear a lot more and the white it won't. And that's a big difference, but I'm gonna, in this um, layer here, smart object, I'm gonna put the threshold of dust and scratches. Which I'll have, I think I'm going to have a radius as maybe 10. I put 15. We could just experiment with the radius. You want to use it until you get rid of most of the black marks. And there's other ways you can do, like I'm going to do select subjects. I'm going to do select inverse. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna put that in a Gaussian blur. Remember, we're affecting the background. It's too much there's halo, halos. Why you want to be careful of the radius? We could use a radius of 12. So I just, you know, I just affected a background area. Then another thing I could do is where I'm going to frequency separation. Or if you want to just do some really cloning. You know, it's a way to clone, but suppose I wanted to be select. You select inverse. Where I would come over here, I could use like maybe a blur, noise, you can use any filters in the selections. Control D. I'm going to put this in a frame. I'm going to put this in a frame.
where I did the frame where, right, whoops, I call it, this action is called, is composed of two actions, and this action is called, more steps, calls this action, and it comes over here, and the condition, is that this is a portrait The big height is used. This for landscape, and the big width is used. I do a new screen share. And the same thing. First thing I want to make my screen. I think I'm going to reset my workspace. Yeah, I think I needed to do that. There we go. There we go. So. Run my actions. Again, background copy, and it just does auto tune, auto contrast color. Then signature, where the first part of this action, it does. A burn to luminosity, a dodge of screen. And so I have a black signature and a white signature. Since it's in the black, I'll just delete the white. And I'll just move this signature down. And I just want to start with I painted my subject. And suppose I wanted to use a stronger brush where I just have the brush in action. I just run the action and it, you have the soft brush. Have a capacity hundred flow fifteen flow nineteen. If I did too much, which I think I did, I'm gonna just switch it by pushing the X key. Then you wanna switch back the Y, you push the X key, this is a toggle.
come up here to the levels now. Because I want to make this more white, I can just do it like that. I don't want to do that. I'm going to control Z, reverse it. But I just rather, a lot of times I just use the midtone slider of levels adjustment. And now what I'm going to do is, let's see, I'm going to go to my light painting folder. I made two copies of this layer. I'm going to turn this into a smart object. I'm going to, in this smart object, I'm going to put like, let's see, this is scratches. I'm going to use the radius of like maybe 10, but I'm going to use a bigger threshold. It's too much 82. See the wine glass. I'm going to use a double from 21. Looks natural when you sharpen it. I'm going to do select subject. Oops, wrong thing. I'm going to do select subject. Where I'm going to get, let's see. Actually, I'm going to do. I'm gonna just do, I'm gonna do control D, control command D. I want also, I also wanna select the selections. Where I did the quick selection, I'm gonna use a space, the shift key. I'm going to use the Alt key. I'm just tapping with the Alt key. And I'm going to get the shift key because why? I'm going to select the rest of the selection. This is tricky, but we'll get there. Put your all key. So now what I'm going to do is the shift key. I'm going to make it a better selection. I'm going to try to make that a little better. There we go. I had to use a quick selection with the you know, the shift and alt. Now we're not done. We're going to select inverse. And then I'm going to do control J. Control J. So basically what I'm doing, I'm affecting the area outside the subject. 
So I'm going to do this is filter. Eight seventy eight is too big. Five. You want to be careful with your radius for the Gaussian blur. Because I don't want to affect the subject. I just want to affect the background. And then there's another way. You could also use the frequency separation. A lot of times I just I didn't do all these, but keep things simple by just doing one, you know. I don't always use frequency separation. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Again, I just do a lot of cloning on the high texture layer. And because I want to do a blur, any type of filter in this area. I'm going to save it while this demo too. There's no demo, right? In our frame. I'm gonna put another file. I'm gonna go the last one. I need a screen share. And then there's actions again. Run some other actions. I'm gonna get rid of the white signature because the black appears better or appears. I do not want my signature upside down or crooked. Okay, now I'm going to just, I always want to start with a soft brush. I'm going to brush a little bigger with the, the bracket key, smaller and bigger. I want a brush I want to be barely noticeable. I'm going to bring up the subject a little more. 
Suppose I wanted to use another brush with a different opacity or different settings where I'm using opacity 100, flow 5, leading 19. I, I always want to start when I do brushing. I want to start with a low opacity brush where it's opacity 10, flow 100, smoothing, you know, 10. And I want to do a different brush. I just run the action. Anytime that you want to erase, do a little too much, I switch to the X and just hide what I don't want to see. And then, I reveal what I do want to see by pushing the X again. Now, what I want to do is I want to turn this a smart object. I want to put like the, I want to put dust and scratches. I don't want to use that bigger radius. I want to use like, you know, maybe 10. I'm going to use like then I want to just do select subject. I'm going to do control command D. I'm going to go over here, quick selection, and I'm going to use my shift. It turns into a plus. I'm going to do select inverse. I'm going to do control J, put in the own layer. And then I'm going to run. Obviously, 112 is too much. Look at the edges. Guys, basically, I'm affecting the area with the Gaussian blur outside the subject. And I want to just see by using the levels. I want to bring out the subject more because this is more important than the background. And I could also use frequency separation, but also you can just, you know, sometimes just want to just clone. And make sure this is checked.
I'm going to save it as demo three. So, I'm going to run an action, my frame action, which calls other actions. I run this action. Again, the same action. This action is called, let's see, this action is called steps. Calls this action, does these steps, comes up over here. And because it's a portrait, the big height is going to be called. So when I and that the height is 4,000 because the height is bigger than the width. This is a portrait, not landscape. Well, that concludes how I use Photoshop with the white flex table. And if you find this webinar interesting, like if you find like black flex stuff, light painting or landscape or Adobe software, if you're interested in still life photography, then this channel is for you, also landscape. So maybe consider liking and subscribing. Thank you for listening to this webinar.